What's up everybody, welcome to another video here on the channel. As always, I am your host, Kareem Tanel, and man, do I have a topic for you today. Today we are sitting and talking about video games and how they are treated differently than movies, TV shows, books, music, and other different forms of entertainment. So it's no secret that I love video games. Uh, I think video games are an awesome medium and they tell stories in ways that other mediums could not. Uh, but let's break this down a little bit. So this whole video idea is sparking from a project I have to do for my Writing 121 class here at Oregon State University. We have to do this project called the Style Project, where we take a rhetorical argument and give different points to it and present those in different ways. Um, I've decided to do video games should be treated the same as movies, books, and TV shows. Because a lot of respect is given to those, but a lot of people still see video games as kind of this niche, oh, those losers over there are playing video games, cool. And they're not. Almost everyone plays a game. If you have a phone, chances are you have a game on it. I mean, look at the boom with Angry Birds or Pokemon Go or all of that. Everyone plays games these days. But the best games play stories, have stories, or at least in my opinion that is. You see, I see entertainment as an avenue for storytelling. With your movies, with your books, with your music, with your plays, with your TV shows, with comics, with video games, they all tell these awesome stories. Whether it's as small and minuscule as the Luxo lamp bouncing on a ball, or as big as Hamlet. These all show different things. The thing that video games can do that others cannot is a little thing called environmental storytelling. Basically this idea that the world can tell the story as well as the characters. And now there's a few games that do this and I'm going to show you a few examples uh, and talk about it of course. The first of these games I want to talk about is Gone Home, created by Fulbright Studios uh, in Portland, Oregon actually. It follows this story of a girl named Sam, and you learn about this girl through audio diaries and through the world that you're in. The entire game takes place inside of a house. That's it. Just this house in 1995. As you discover more about this house, you learn that Sam is, in fact, gay, and her parents disagreed and drove a wedge between them and split them up, and a bunch of stuff happens and it causes Sam to leave. I'm not going to spoil much of this. Go, go play the game. Um, you wouldn't be able to find out these art these things though unless you explore the world. There's a few there's separate stories for Sam, for Sam's mother, for Sam's father, and for Sam's girlfriend, Lonnie, that you could only find if you're exploring this world. You could play this game in 15 minutes, or you could take three hours and just explore and discover what all is happening in this world. It's really a beautiful thing. This is a game that has emotionally destroyed me and built me back up. It's caused me to really think about what I have. And now for the next game. The next game is a little bit more recent. It is Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm not a nerd. I'm not a nerd at all. Horizon Zero Dawn follows the story of Ava as she travels this world trying to figure out where she belongs in it and where she came from. The cool thing about it though is that this takes place way in the future. Machines have kind of, we've kind of gone back to a primitive state of life with tr different tribes and bows and arrows and such. And we are broken up and like I said, we're broken up into different tribes and there's different cultures happening. But tech is now seen as magic and they don't, really don't know what's going on. So it's kind of cool because you are learning about, okay, where are we? You never really know where you are until the very end. Like, kind of like Gone Home, with you don't really know what the story's about until the very end. Basically what happens is, you're, they have your main storyline, your basics, your characters interacting, your characters doing different things, and the story very much being driven by the characters. Um, but the whole time though, the only way for you to really learn where you are is to explore these ruins, and to explore the world to see 
find out where in fact you are, which is one of the major plot points for the game. Again, I don't want to try to spoil too much, so I'm just going to cap it there with Horizon Zero Dawn. The next game I want to talk about is The Last of Us. This is another PlayStation exclusive like Horizon Zero Dawn, but it does it in a different way. Created by Naughty Dog Studios, The Last of Us is about Joel and Ellie as they traverse the lands. Um, most people who play video games know what The Last of Us is, and I have been writing about The Last of Us for most of this term as that's what I decided to use for a big paper that I had turned in earlier. Um, the Last of Us is a very similar circumstance to Horizon Zero Dawn, where you learn a lot more if you are exploring the world and seeing what all is there, but you don't really have to do it. And that's what I'm trying to get at with all of this, is video games tell you a story, and we'll tell you a flat, solid story, you come, you watch it, you leave. It's like a movie, like a TV show. But if you take your time, if you actually care about it and want to see where things are going, if you want to see where things came from, you can. With movies and TV shows, you can still kind of do that, but no one wants to sit and watch a TV show frame by frame by frame, unless they're like making it or something. No one enjoys doing that. But with a video game, it's built into the system. Books are a wonderful thing because you build the world in your mind as you read it. That's why I personally love reading. With video games, the, mind, the world is there. The world is already there for you to explore. But it's your choice to explore it. One such circumstance is the game Batman Arkham City. Um, it, well, if anyone that you don't know the Batman story, Batman's parents are killed when he's a young age and it sparks a bunch of stuff and it makes him eventually become Batman. But let's break it down a little bit. His parents were murdered outside of the Monarch Theater in Gotham City. In, Ar in Batman Arkham City, you can find their death site, a thing that you actually have to, you have to search it out. Some storylines allude to the fact that it is there, but you have to find it. You have to stumble upon this for one of the most heartwarming, heartbreaking scenes in all of the Arkham series. Video games are not that different from other entertainment forms. They manage to take animation and stories and music and bring them together for an interactive story experience. There are some games where stories are less important. Take any of the sports games, for instance. Even, but even those have some small storylines that they put in there for fun. Stories are a worldwide thing, and they've been with humans as long as we can remember. Even history itself is just one gigantic story of the world, of the universe, if you will. Video games are a way to tell that story. Books are a way to tell that story. Movies are a way to tell that story. Music's a way to tell that story. Theater is a way to tell that story. Anything can be used to tell a story. Art movies, music, it's all just storytelling. So why video games are treated differently than movies with books and other forms of entertainment is beyond me. I know that I can't change other people, but I think I can change other people's minds with that. Video games have sparked thousands of inspirations, people inspir inspiring people to make more video games, to make books, to make their own entertainment, to express themselves in ways that people didn't think possible. Video games are the entire reason that I keep going, that I want to be an animator. The video games are the entire reason that I have this YouTube channel. Video games are a thing that bring people together, much like movies bring people together. Like book clubs brought people together. Like people will sit and talk about a TV show for hours on end. Video games are just as important as movies and TV shows and books. In fact, they may even be around longer than that. Because an interactive experience causes you to be more invested in these worlds. To really break down those barriers to make you feel like the characters rather than just associating with them. So yeah, do I think, am I biased? 
Of course I am. But I think this is a compelling argument for why video games should be treated the same as other entertainment forms. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments. I want to have a discussion about this. I don't want this to be one-sided. Whatever you think, let me know, and I will respond in the best way I can. So thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful day, and keep on keeping. Bye, everybody.